Your club face angle is far more open than that 2.2 path. So now you've got a ball that pushes and it cuts and it's in the trees. Uh, in a way, you have <laughs> you have half of this right. Okay. Uh, you want a swing path that's going to be 2.2 or a little bit more to the right, but now you need to have the face angle that's more close to that. All right, Nick. So we're going to talk about the five key data points on launch monitor that you think everyone should know a bit more about. Get us started. Where do you want to start with this? Let's start with the club data, Corey. Okay. What do you All think? Right. Should we do that? Let's do that. Okay. So uh, one of the variables up here face to target. That okay. is the most important variable for this ball's starting direction. So that's okay. the face angle when you have the ball the most compressed on the face that will give you the starting direction. The first question I ever ask anyone who plays golf is where do you aim the face, which sounds ridiculous, but that okay. is the first question everybody should ask. Because if you're trying to hit a push and a draw or a pull and a cut, yep. you need to aim the face angle where you want the ball to start. This okay. data point is a great reference for that, but 90% of people I meet, even tour level players, when I ask them that question, they say at the target. And you're already just setting yourself up to hit a, uh, an awkward shot unless you want to hit it perfectly straight. That's the only time zero makes a lot of sense. So are you saying that you, you set up with it open? Or are you saying? Yes, yeah, you want okay. to point the face at a dress. Uh, where you want the ball to start. Okay. That face to target uh, metric will tell you how well you did that. Got it. So yes, if you want to push and draw, don't aim the face of the target. That's one so of the, the most So the easiest way starts to the game. would be if I wanted to move it to the left, I would just close it? Yes. Right? Let's okay. see if you can Let's do it. Let's see if we can do it. That'll give the ball the pull direction or to the left. That doesn't mean the ball's going to end up to the left. You okay. got your face to path relationship that we'll talk about here in a second. That's going to dictate what happens from there. But yes, if you want to hit a pull, you better aim the face to the left. I did it. I know. It works. 5.6. Shocking. <laughs> That's it. Now, can you push one? Uh, Yes. Well, I mean, all we're doing is just opening it set Open up, right? It up. Yep. I mean, this doesn't mean your shot's going to be good, but that's how you control that. Yeah. So for people at home who want to hit a push and a draw, you need to set up with the club face more open to the target than closed yep. so that you can actually get the push part. Okay. And then to make the ball curve, let's talk about that. Yes. You ready? That's our second data okay. point, right? Yeah, that is. Okay. So the relationship of the face angle and the path dictates the curve. So the next variable I would pay attention to is club path. Okay. So that needs to be, if you want to hit a draw, like in this case, so let's dissect this shot. Yep. So you're trying to hit a push and a draw. Okay. Um, I don't remember how you normally play, but let's say that's what you want to do. You have a face to target that's almost eight degrees to the right. The way that you're going to make the ball draw is to have a swing path that is more to the right than that eight degrees. Okay. Follow me? Because right now, my club path was also going. It was to the right, but it right. wasn't more than the club face. Okay. It was less than the club face, so okay. now the ball curved. So even though you swung in to out two degrees, 2.2 to be yep. very precise, your club face angle was far more open than that 2.2 path. So now you've got a ball that pushes and it cuts and it's in the trees. Yes. Now in the, in a way, you have, <laughs> you have half of this right. Okay. Uh, you want a swing path that's going to be 2.2 or a little bit more to the right, but now you need to have the face angle that's more close than that. So it's the two together really make this work. So let's just demonstrate for people the club path. That one you swung 2.2 to the right. Yep. Can you swing, say, four, five, six to the left on this one? Sure. Yep. Understanding each one of these and how they work and being able to have some command of all of those really do a nice That's shot. That's not bad. Yeah, it was a nice shot. 3.4 to the left. Yep. Your face angle was almost zero, so the ball starts pretty straight, curves to the right. So how should I practice these things besides just, uh, you know, wildly swinging left and yeah. right? And uh, right. <laughs> doing that is one way you do it. Trial and error and get you pretty far just using the launch monitor when you have the data. So that's yep. a, actually, I, like, I kind of like that as okay. a way to you get like started. You like trial and error? To well, just with. to mess around with it and yeah. get familiar with Learning how the data is right? going to change. Yeah, sure, absolutely. But uh, the Golf Tech app with the swing capture feature has a very interesting OptiMotion piece that we've taken. So okay. in all of our Golf Tech lessons, I mean, we do millions of those every year. Uh, we have some in-bay tech that's cool, but we put it in the app. So okay. if you fire up your swing capture app, you can use a side view uh, of Cordy like this one. So set up to this shot. Okay. Camera, you can see where that's at. Now, when Cordy makes a swing, go up to the top and then stop when the shaft's parallel to the ground on the way down. For him to swing 18 degrees into out, when you look from this camera view, you can see his hands and the club head, and you can relate those two. The further in that trace will be uh, presented, relative to his hands or the further behind him it is, that means that your swing direction is really programmed at this point in time to go into out a lot like that one yeah. to hit that shot you had. Doesn't mean that you can't screw it up still, but yeah. that's what it's programmed to do. Okay. Now, 96% of people who show up to golf tech lessons slice. 
So on the downswing, when the shaft's They're parallel, like that. Down, yeah, the club head. Well, is, I can do that, or even more. It's on the other side of the ball, even at this point in time. The trace again will look radically different between yeah. in to out and out to in. Relatively straight is what I try to do most often, yeah. but slightly in to out. If you slice a lot, learning how to swing in to out a lot is really easy to use. So you can use that uh, the trace of the club to okay. help you represent that okay. quite a bit. So that's a super easy way to do it. Well, I want to see the app. Can you can we hit one and yeah. can you show me how this? Uh, do your normal swing. If normal you want. swing. Yeah. Okay, let's and do normal. Swing. I'd like the three kind of comp videos here so there's one that'll be straight and you'll be able to see the the trace and when the shafts parallel to the ground it'll look like your hands and the trace are really close together if you wanted to swing the most end out that has a swing path of two and a half end out so the most end out would be the uh, uh, the hips and shoulders closed okay, or more like one. you're aiming yourself towards where I'm standing okay. without changing your stance how's that, Does that, that look looks, weird it looks very weird okay. that's why it's going to work <laughs> Now that one compared to the other, and you'll see the, the shaft parallel to the ground and the downswing, how much more that is inward or yep. behind you. And then if you want to do the opposite, do the opposite. I Let's think those it. three together would be a really cool comparison from the side view. So if you want to hit one the, uh, with the most leftward club path, yeah, you okay. lower the shaft, open your hips and shoulders, slice across that ball. And now you've got a swing path that is five and a half to the left. Yeah. So those will look radically different from that side view camera. And that's a good way just to comp yourself in a 2D type of video. All the data to start with is important, but where do you start is really the, the question we're trying to answer in this video. Yep. Launch angle would be a good one. Uh, most people can clearly grasp that one uh, easily. So that is the vertical component of your ball flight. Yep. So once you hit the ball, what angle does it leave relative to the ground? Yours okay. was 16 degrees to hit a seven iron. At your uh, ball speed, 14 to 18 really is a good number. We put that in as optimal range. You don't have to have an optimal launch here. Is that adjusting to the ball speed? Or it is, is that just, okay. no, it's definitely not a, a constant number. It's okay. for you. Okay. So yeah, relative to the ball speed on that shot, that, that's your window. And you're right in the middle of that thing. So how about for fun, we saw your normal shot. Now now can you hit this at a, just a lower launch window? So say 12 degrees. Oh boy. So going down four, you have options here. I would just push the shaft more forward. This is the loft of the club needs to be reduced or you hit it lower on the face. And that would show you that if that was your normal shot, you could start hitting this a little bit higher. Where this has a, a severe implication is the landing angle of the ball, which is really the most important part anyway, is hmm. how does the ball hit the ground? So descent angle then is literally just the angle it's coming into the green at. Mm -hmm. People who don't play golf very well can't control the launch angle. Got it. So, or the backspin, or just where you're hitting it on the club, and those three erratic locations and ways to use the club lead you to a descent angle that's either too obtuse on a good one. Okay. Most people have too much dynamic loft and spin the ball too much hmm. relative to their club head speed. So that lands and kind of bounces sideways or whichever way it was curving. Okay. Um, or they miss hit it and hit it a little bit thin, and then those go rolling over the yeah. green. So the predictability is what that's the ultimate part of golf is to have a predictable result. That's where bad players don't have predictability. So they get chaos in there. So the next one is backspin. So that's the, the rate in which the ball is moving backwards after you hit it, immediately after you hit this ball. Yep. And spin is just spin. That's the, there's a, a finite number in there. Camera-based systems get backspin the best, in my opinion. Okay. This is one of them that's really tricky for uh, any other type of tech like radar to work with. So the backspin, uh, for you to hit a seven iron at your ball speed, we've got the optimal ranges in there. You don't have to hit those again. They're just a good reference for you to get at. Because your backspin was low, your launch angle was high, the ball never hit its apex quite like you would normally if you had a lot hmm. more spin on it. So the ball still landed basically in your optimal range. So it's uh -huh. tying all those together. So it's kind of our first two, launch angle and backspin, uh -huh. equals our descent angle. Yes. Got it. Yes, Got it. there's uh, there's more to it than that. A little bit. It's the ball speed, which is also a factor. This in. is as complicated as I can handle it, I, Nick. That's I all totally I got. Get it. You got it. I mean, really, <laughs> okay. that's it. So don't don't fret if you see a red number. Okay. If you have two green ones, you're doing okay. Well, those are the five pieces of data that you need to know to get better on launch monitor. Um, I really enjoy kind of some of the games. I love playing around with these numbers. Right. Yeah. I get such a kick out of it. Um, the spin number taking a wedge. Trying all kinds of different stuff. This Seeing is, how this, much you can get or how little. Yes. Yeah. I mean, 
once you start to play with this, this is so much fun. Yeah, so. trial and error is super cool on these, and now you've got a way of quantifying, am I doing it right? I think a lot of people are amazed when they hit on software like this of their, their standard shot, whether it's a wedge or, it's all adaptable, so whatever club you hit and whatever ball speed you have, uh, the ranges change all the time for an at-home user. So for just having that as part of your standard software is pretty cool. So you hit your pitching wedge, and then you look at the launch angle, backspin, descent angle. You might be shocked that none of that actually is anywhere near the optimal range of what you'd want to do. And then you might grab your three iron or four iron if you still have one, hit those shots and realize, wow, this is not good either. So it's really eye-opening for anybody at home who wants to get better at golf without trying to do a whole lot of work, without having to seek out anyone to help you with your game, just what can you do on your own? Running yourself just through that optimizer of those three launch conditions with the ball can teach you a ton about your game. Yeah, absolutely. Well, if you're enjoying this Launch Miner series, hit the subscribe button, notification bell, all that good stuff, because we've got another one coming up next. We'll keep going on this Launch Miner series.